Hello everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital YouTube channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribers button and give this video a thumbs up. Anna accuses Brennan in his Metro courtroom of fabricating evidence against Carly for the FBI. She inquires as to his desires from Carly. He just acknowledges that he enjoys being with Carly. Anna is aware that he is working on a project. If not, why would the WSB establish a station here? He acknowledges that she is correct. Without a reason, the WSB does nothing, since he was demoted and is now simply a menial agent doing as he is told. Brennan acknowledges that he has no idea why the WSB is doing what he is doing. Anna queries Valentin, speculating as to whether he and Charlotte are curled up on a beach somewhere. If Valentin is, he observes, it's because someone told him so he could escape. Anna is asked by him whose side she is on. Whose side indeed, remarks Anna. She walks out, as Scott, Ava, and Kate's enter the restaurant to have Ava post bail and become celibate. Carly is working with Trish. When Carly approaches them, she queries how Ava is out of jail. Says Ava, she entered a not guilty plea and was granted bail. Carly finds it unbelievable that she's here, acting as though nothing happened, even though Christina's baby did die. Although it wasn't her fault, Ava claims that was a tragedy. Ava says that she has come to get her belongings. Carly says she can't because her suite is locked up and used as a crime scene. Ava is also told by Carly that since they are booked, she will need to find alternative lodging. Can they at least get a table? Kate asks. Carly promises to send somebody over. At a table, Ava, Scott, and Kate's raise a glass to Ava's independence. When Kate's revealed during her hearing that she is a subject of an ongoing investigation, Ava claims she was taken aback. Carly hears this and wonders if Kate's is merely trying to bring Sonny down, or if the FBI is aware of this probe. As Kate's puts it, his job is to apprehend offenders. Ava is informed by Carly that Kate is manipulating her in the same way that he did with Jason, and that he is chasing a personal grudge. She informs Kate's that he has no regard for the law, justice, or even his kid. Kate's cautions her about bringing up his son. She queries where he has been residing for the previous few months. Where does Sonny live, or where does his son reside? She claims that the FBI will eventually discover what he is doing. This party has gone bad, and Scott breaks up with Carly as she leaves. Since Sonny has been brainwashing Carly for decades, Ava warns Kate's not to allow her get close to him. Ava also informs him that she fears for her safety because Sonny ordered Jason to threaten her while she is in jail. Although Ava did not replace Sonny's medication, she claims Jason accused her of doing so. Yet both Sonny and Jason are aware of the placebos. The pharmacist Clemens is safe, according to Kate's. He asks her to let him know who changed the medications. While Ava acknowledges that she is unsure, don't let Sonny know. When Brennan enters the restaurant, Kate's notices him and murmurs that he finds it hard to believe Brennan is not incarcerated. Brennan goes to inquire about Carly's whereabouts in the pub. Brennan asks Carly to return to his suite so they may finish their supper after they later meet. That seems like a poor idea to her. She accepts when he offers to buy her a drink in this location. She queries why he's in Port Charles as they raise a drink to new acquaintances. He restates that he is the new WSB head in town and that what Anna said was accurate. He acknowledges that he was offered the option to be posted in Bali or here. It still shocks Carly that he choose Port Charles. He asserts that having witnessed one tropical paradise, one has experienced them all. Furthermore, he says, You are here. That's a line, as she says. He asserts that it is accurate. Ava notices that Brenna has scared Kate's in the meanwhile. Kate's returns to Sonny after saying it's nothing. He says he will take Sonny directly to the pharmacist at the appropriate moment. Before Sonny can hurt himself, Kate's intends to use the pharmacist as bait and arrest him. Tracy hosts a tea party for Violet and her stuffed animals at the Quartermain estate. It's the most exquisite tea set Violet has ever seen, she claims. Tracy says it belonged to her mother. 
Violet claims that her mother was very attractive and there are numerous photos of her floating around. According to Tracy, she was quite polite and courteous. Violet questions why she argued with her so frequently in the first place. Families do this, according to Tracy, and court remains do it even more than other families. Tracy claims that since her mother was well-liked by all and consistently got her way, their arguments were never extremely heated. They start talking about animals. Front yard. Violet Tracy friend. jokes. Violet thinks it's a great idea and suggests they consult Monica. Tracy declines because she believes Monica would accept. It's Monica's house. Alan gave it to her. Violet states. Tracy scolds her brother for being overly giving. Violet believed that being generous was a good thing. Tracy claims that although her brother was a kind man, it may be draining for him to put other people's happiness above his own. Monica claimed he was a doctor, and Violet has seen his pictures. They were really in love. Tracy affirms that they were a fantastic fit, but she thinks Alan went too far in giving Monica the house. If he didn't, Violet observes, they wouldn't have a place to live. After acknowledging that, Tracy queries who informed her that Alan had given Monica the house. Violet says, everyone. Blyze informs Christina at the hospital that following her ordeal, she is not fit to go on tour at this time. According to Christina, she can't pass up this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. That's exactly what Blaze claims she is saying. Blaze asks Christina, who is clearly in love with her, why she is pushing her away. If Christina truly loves her, she must go, says Christina. Christina sobs, lamenting the loss of her kid that she loves so dearly. She has no affection to give anyone at the moment and feels empty. She believes Blaze should not have to give up something amazing because having her around could ruin her life. Blaze thinks that between them, they may get through this. Even though that is a possibility, Christina weeps because eventually, she will hate her or at the very least be angry with her for forfeiting what may have been. Blaze claims it won't occur, but Christina is aware that she has a secret desire to take that tour. Admittedly, Blaze feels that Christina is pressuring her to choose her profession over her personal life. Christina acknowledges that she is and that Blaze needs to live her best life, which isn't with her at this time. Blaze eventually agrees to leave, but she can reach her via phone if necessary, says Blaze. After the tour ends, she's stopped by Christina, who says they're not going to make plans just yet. She is unable to predict the future or set a time limit for her grief process. If they can't at least keep an eye on each other, Blaze asks. Christina says they can, and she wants her to live her life and be happy. Blaze sobs, saying how much she will miss her. Christina will be ecstatic to watch her soar because she knows she will be doing what she was meant to do. Christina promises to be incredibly proud of her. After their kiss, Blaze tears away. Christina sobs by herself. Molly goes to see her sister later. Molly informs her that she visited Ava in jail and that she went to the graveyard with TJ. She wishes to guarantee Ava's payment. Christina assures her Ava will cover the cost. Christina displays the pictures of Ava, pushing her sister out the window to her sister. She is informed by Christina about their... So what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.